Yo, what is going on guys? Back with another video. Today we're going over my gun collection. Um, I have everything from pistols, SMGs, uh, AKs, M4s, snipers, all the cool stuff. Anything ranges from, these three are CO2, I got gas pistols, gas submachine guns, and then HPA submachine gun, electric guns, and then spring guns as well. Uh, so a little mix of everything. So we're going to be kind of starting off on this side and kind of going to that side. So these three I'm actually going to be showing off kind of more of the looks because unfortunately I do not have CO2. I know, I'm a doofus, but uh, basically this one is really cool too. I'll throw up clips actually that I have of these guns because I did actually get some gameplay with these two at least. So this one's kind of cool. Uh, first up, it's just kind of like a Desert Eagle gun. Uh, the magazines um, actually have a CO2 cartridge in the middle for, that's where you actually put the uh, the gas equivalent in this gun. Um, it is gas blowback as you could see. Um, it has fire select so you could do semi-automatic and safe and then a uh, 20 RPS full auto burst as well. So this thing's pretty fun to use on the field. Um, it's actually a little bit more accurate than you would think for a stock gun. Um, and I did do a gameplay of this. I'll throw up the footage for that. So this is, yeah, a little bit less practical um, because of its size for a sidearm, but it is very fun to play with. So if you ever get the chance, I would suggest using that. So next up, we have the Novridge SSP-1. Um, I got this actually with the, uh, the kind of the light and slide as well, and then also the uh, upgraded front sight um, and some other stuff as well. Um, these are cool, also CO2. Um, these are a little bit different where you have to undo the... Um, the bottom of the magazine and then the CO2 cartridge actually kind of hides in there and these also have some upgraded uh, lips as well on the magazine to make it a little more efficient. Um, I like this gun actually a lot because it actually kicks really hard for a pistol. It is CO2 and it does have a metal slide so it kind of kicks pretty hard. Um, I'm going to throw up clips of this as well because I got a cool couple gameplays with this but unfortunately today I do not have CO2 so we will not be shooting this today but um, I do have some clips so I'll be throwing those up right now. <laughs> yeah, so again, this is a CO2, so I cannot shoot this today. Um, I do have some shooting clips of this from the unboxing video, so I'll throw those up right now. But um, I actually am giving this away, um, as well as this pistol, and then I'm also giving away this sniper, and then I also have a, a little stubby AK, I'll throw up an image right now. Those three guns, or sorry, those four guns I'll be actually already giving away in separate videos. Um, just kind of letting you guys know, so those won't be around too long, and yes, I'm going to be doing more giveaways as well. And I don't want to tell you which one of these, but we might or might not be giving away one of my prized possessions uh, soon. So guys, I'll keep you updated on that too. Alright, hey guys, before this video actually continues, I have two quick announcements. Uh, for one, next Friday, the 15th of this month, um, I'm actually going to be dropping three new patch designs, and you get entries into winning a super cool $1,000 plus airsoft gun. If you guys are interested in that, mark the date, the 15th this month I'll be doing a crazy patch drop and make sure you don't miss out on the patches and my second announcement is I actually started a second channel with my buddy Gray it's a funny business podcast channel if you guys are interested in seeing about a little bit more about my life in the business side of the channel uh, make sure to give that a follow it's gonna be the first link down in the description with that said I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video so next up, this is a gas blowback UMP45. So this gun is actually one of my favorites. I didn't think I would like this gun nearly as much as I did. It is manufactured by KWA. I have a little um, fake EOTech on the top. It kind of just helps. The site is really big for CQB environments. It just kind of helps see targets a little bit easier, as well as some random stubby kind of grip on there too. It just kind of helps me have that cool C grip when I'm shooting. And then this thing is cool because you can collapse the stock as well. And the magazines are um, actually the only kind of downfall of this gun. It's really lightweight. It shoots pretty good for stock. It has a great uh, blowback. It's very light as well. Um, it has safe, uh, semi, two round burst, and full auto. But the bad part is the magazines actually are really like awkwardly shaped and they're very um, beefy and kind of like a square shaped and there's not really any mag um, pouches for these so that's kind of the downside. I actually had a lot of trouble loading these mags. I think they're supposed to hold 30 but it seems like I can only hold maybe 10 or 15 at the max before the springs kind of get too stiff so maybe it's just me and my speed loader but um, these magazines were pretty much the only downfall and obviously they are pretty expensive. I believe they are 40 or 50 dollars per magazine. Um, but the gun itself is pretty good. I got this used too so it was a good deal. Next up we have my 
um, HPA gun. Actually, my only one in my collection right now that is powered by compressed air. Um, I'll show you the tank right now. So this is my little setup. It's a little old. I've had this for a few years now. Um, but the way it works is it basically has, it's regulated by PSI, as you can see. Um, it's shooting about a little bit above 80 right now. You have these paintball tanks that you put up to these regulators. So it regulates to 3,000 PSI into about 80. So it's safe to use for the HPA guns. But that's kind of my little setup right there. Um, I should probably get a new one soon because I've had this for a few years and a little bit of it's starting to rust so I don't know how safe that really is. But yeah, this is one of the uh, more rare guns because actually it is a uh, Tokyo Murui MP7 and then also it has a Bingo Airsoft Kit Works engine in there. So it actually has an Airsoft Horsar Jack in there too so it's an HPA system. That gun itself, the TM like base gun, is really high quality. I've had this for a few years now. Nothing's broke, everything's like stiff, you know, nothing's wobbly or anything like that. And the stock actually comes with these grooves so you can actually make the stock go out longer too and then also you can collapse it as well. So the magazines are, they're kind of plasticky and, and really light so the light part of it's really nice. Um, they feed decently well but um, it'd be cool if they made some like full metal ones that were a little bit more um, high quality and fed better. That would be the best scenario there. But this gun does work wonders on the field because of its HPA upgrade. The AEPs don't have too many aftermarket support. That's why I kind of went with the HPA and uh, you can't actually buy this gun anymore. Um, a Bingo Airsoft actually unfortunately went off business I think a, a year or two ago um, at least and you can't really get these anymore. So I think it's kind of like my uh, special kind of like rare-ish gun I have. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, it has the traditional kind of MP7 sights you'll see, you know, like video games and stuff, which I think is really cool. And then the FCU, so that's the fire control unit. It's basically like a little computer, and it kind of just powers the brains of the gun, too. You can control the FPS, the RPS, just to name a few things. And there's a lot of micro settings to control the timing of, like, the nozzle and stuff like that. So it's kind of a unique system. And you need these kind of tiny little batteries that kind of fit in the, the front here. Um, I've actually went through, like, three different kinds. I can't really find one that kind of fits, so we'll be kind of shooting it a little uh, weird today. Yeah, but I'm also thinking about upgrading this as well. Uh, leave down in the comments if you think I should do that. Maybe a barrel upgrade, kind of maybe even like a paint job or something like that just to spice it up because I have had this in a, a quite a few videos and it, it performs pretty well, but um, you know, towards the longer ranges, it could use an upgrade for like the hop up. Um, maybe even try to do kind of an R hop system on here. And then also the barrel too might need some upgrading as well um, and spice it up with some optics and the external parts as well. I think that'd be a really cool build. And then kind of circling back up here, um, these are my gas blowback pistols as well. So this one, again, I'm not really sure the brand, but it is kind of like a M9 style gun. This is powered by gas blowback magazine. As you can see, and then this one, I just did a video on this one. I took this from a stock Tokyo Mui High Kappa, and now it's kind of a little bit more uh, spiced up, if you will. Um, it has grip tape on there. Obviously, uh, most of the parts inside the gun are upgraded. I have a tracer unit on the end, the slide's upgraded, the sights are upgraded, pretty much everything this gun is upgraded. So it shoots really well. And obviously it has a cool silver magazine that's a little bit upgraded as well. So this gun is obviously my favorite pistol and I can't wait to play with it after the quarantine's done. So going into kind of the bigger guns, this guy kind of sneaked in with the submachine gun still, but um, this is one of my favorites too, so I kind of put it over by my favorites. This guy is a AK kind of style build. It's a LCT, um, that's the brand of the gun. And obviously the internals are upgraded by Umbrella Armory, so this thing is shooting really good as well. Um, nothing too special about the externals. It's a relatively stock. But the gun itself is actually surprisingly, this is my first AK I actually ever got. Surprisingly pretty heavy. It's even upgraded with a little bit lighter internals as well. And it makes them shoot faster too. If you're familiar with Umbrella Armory, they make really cool upgrades to guns. Um, this one is still a little bit heavy for my liking, but it adds a little bit of realism and it shoots really well. I can't wait to play with this gun after quarantine as well. Moving next, this is pretty much I would say my baby child if I had one for Airsoft. Um, this guy I've had probably the longest. Um, it has a custom paint job by Bloomies Airsoft and as well as complete um, internal upgrades by Umbrella Armory as well. I have a hollow sun sight on there. I really like the C grip on guns, so that's why I run kind of like this style too. And then I have the flashlight set up as well. Obviously the hop up is upgraded too. It's got that pro win in there. And this thing just shoots very well. It's like the best, I would say, all around kind of mid-range to longer range uh, rifle I have. So next up, we're going to move on to this little guy. This is a um, G&G Air P9. Um, this guy is also upgraded by Umbrella Armory. Um, this one is actually my only DSG in my collection as of right now. 
Um, it shoots really fast, I think around 40 RPS. And then these signatures are just people that kind of built it and friends that um, actually, fun fact, won this in a, um, the Evike shooting competition, if you guys remember. That was quite a while ago. If you guys are subscribed for that long, let me know in the comments below. Um, anyway, so this thing is really cool. It's super lightweight. It's probably the best performing CQB gun I have. This thing with a with a drum mag on there and a hollow sun sighted in just does absolutely wonders in CQB environments. And the overall feel of the gun too, it's super compact and it's just easy to maneuver around the field. It just gotta be one of my favorite CQB guns I've ever shot. Next up, this is a uh, base GNG gun that's also upgraded by Umbrella Armory 2. The internals are upgraded to shoot pretty fast. I believe it's around 30 RPS and it has a semi response that's really good. And it has capabilities of a binary trigger. I actually have a video of playing with a binary trigger if you guys are interested on my channel. GNG did a good job with the externals and obviously Umbrella Armory did a good job with the internals. All right, so moving on to the spring gun. So my first one, I think this this is a classic army SR40. I'm actually giving this away too. I think I mentioned that earlier in the video. Nothing super special about this gun. It just feels good. It works good. The magazines are quite cool too. They're kind of like slim. You could probably fit a lot in like a, a pouch or something. And it's actually bolt action as well. Both of these snipers I'm going to show you are bolt action, which makes it really kind of unique uh, firing style that I'm not really used to. Okay, so this is definitely one of my unique guns. So this is the other spring rifle. Um, I'm actually going to show you guys right now how it works. So you basically get this case when you get the gun. I did actually get this in a uh, unboxing as well if you guys want to see that. Oops, I just broke all my other guns. All right, so once we got the lower out of the compartment, there's also a upper compartment as well. There's the lock and unlock mechanism on the upper part. Once you put these all on the unlock position, this little uh, plastic flap opens up and then you have access to the um, barrel and the magazine in a bipod if you choose to use that. And then once you put that on the lower, you'll have a fully functional bolt action sniper rifle. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that little overview of all the guns. Um, I'm gonna actually strap on the GoPro and then we're gonna shoot these bad boys and let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite. So we got the GoPro on, uh, yes, the target it does say what you think. I'm gonna try my best to angle the GoPro um, down to see the actual gun shoot and not the actual target. First up, I we could start with actually uh, assembling this one. So if you guys are curious, it has a little push uh, button here and then that actually makes the stock kind of come out. Cool. All right guys, so we're gonna be moving on to the uh, left section and then we're gonna be moving on to the right section. All right, so we're actually gonna be shooting this uh, MP7 first as it is kind of the most difficult to shoot as I do have to hold the HPA system and the battery. So I actually can't find a battery right now that actually fits into the um, position right here and I don't wanna really mess up the FCU. So we're gonna try to do this delicately but before i do that i just kind of want to show you guys so it does have a little functional grip here that you can move back and forth as well as the stock being able to collapse and um, open up as, and open up too and then these sights are again a uh, flip up too so that's unique if you like these kind of more long range ones or the little cqb ones pretty cool has a great trigger response. I'll show you that guys real quick. Pretty cool. All right, so in the pistols, the first one is the um, M9 style kind of gun here. I am giving this away, so I'm trying to keep it as new as possible, holding on to this little tag here for the new owner, but it's pretty simple, self-explanatory. Uh, gas magazine, gas blowback gun, pretty cool. So next up, kind of my pride and joy of the pistol category. I just built this uh, a few days ago. If you guys want to check out that video, it's on my channel. As you can see, it's a lot faster than the uh, previous gas blowback pistol. It does have obviously the internal upgrades and external upgrades to make it uh, a lot more faster on the field. So that's gonna be obviously a really fun one to play with when I get out of quarantine. Can't wait to show you guys that on the field. So we're gonna be moving to the um, kind of the gas blowback submachine gun I have over here, the UMP. So this one, obviously it looks uh, a lot bigger 
um, but it actually is pretty lightweight for its size. Obviously it's not as lightweight as the MP7, as this does have a uh, HPA engine in there, and obviously it is a little bit more of a plastic construction. Um, this does, this is a plastic construction as well, but it does feel a little lightweight for its size. So a cool thing about this gun too, is it has a semi-automatic and then a two round burst and then a full auto function as well. So that was the semi-automatic. I'll be turning it to the two round burst function now. So that's pretty cool. And then also it has the full auto function too. All right, so next up we have the Umbrella Armory upgraded LCT AK. Problem with this gun, um, again, I'm having a lot of problems with batteries to find, but this one, I do not have the right size of battery. Um, so I'm gonna be having to kind of hold the battery as I'm shooting it uh, for you guys. Uh, I apologize for that. As I plug this gun in too, you'll hear the uh, little electronic system wake up. That's called the uh, Gate Titan. That little beep is uh, its functionality when it turns on. So this gun obviously has a safe function, a semi-auto function, and a full auto function. Pretty cool. And then here's the semi-automatic version of that. Pretty cool. All right, next up we have the Psy Gray. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, it's actually not as heavy as you think. This is actually a decent amount lighter than the AK, believe it or not, even though it does look a little bit more kind of metal. Sweet. So next up we have my Air P9. Uh, this gun I found to be pretty kind of useful with the uh, the drum mag, so I'm going to use that today, and it just kind of looks cool. Uh, I forgot to mention this one actually has the amplifier on, so that's why it has a little kind of a poppy sound. And then here's the full auto. Pretty cool. We're going to be moving on to the last couple guns here. Uh, last one of the electric guns. We have this GNG upgraded by Embraer Armory 2. Here's the full auto now. Pretty cool. All right, so that's the last of the gas, HPA, and electric guns. Now we're gonna be moving on to the spring sniper rifles. Pretty sweet. Obviously these snipers are a little bit more boring, so I'm just going to kind of show you a dry firing one. So basically here's the magazine. And then the uh, bolt actually feels, it's a lot less of a uh, rotation as the other sniper rifle, as you can see. guys that concludes the shooting test of the video um, if you guys did enjoy please like the video it helps with the YouTube algorithm and then if you guys want to comment below your favorite gun in the video I'm actually really curious which one you guys like the best so make sure to comment below um, if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more feel free to subscribe um, I do lots of airsoft giveaways and I'm doing a lot more in the future I'll be giving these two pistols away that sniper away and then I'm also giving away a $300 um, ENL AK2 but I'm doing a lot more giveaways in the future but just like that the video is over and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.